a gigantic slingshot. NASA is testing a new way to get to space. We'll reveal if this is the future of launching satellites or maybe even humans into space. Yes, you heard it right. This gigantic slingshot might be our shot at an unconventional yet cheaper and faster flight to space. This is Spin Launch, and they might be swinging as soon as 2025. The world's first ever space catapult. Spin Launch's rocket flinging launch system will be the world's first kinetic energy based launch system that aims to achieve economically viable spaceflight. But what's the real difference between this unorthodox slingshot and traditional rockets? Well, let's first talk about the company that ignited the concept of this space cannon. Spin Launch is an American company that is causing a huge stir in the space industry as they are planning to hurl things into space. It was founded in 2014 by Jonathan Yanni in California, where an innovative idea continued to grow into reality. Space Launch CEO Jonathan Yanni briefly described their idea as making space more accessible through a technically mature and game-changing approach. And indeed, it is promising to be a game-changing approach. Imagine a satellite, hundreds of kilograms in weight, blasting into space without using any fuel. The idea of using centrifugal force, an outward force on a mass when it is rotated, as the sole energy to sling objects into space might seem a little bit sketchy at first. So, how exactly does Spin Launch plan to catapult heavy objects like satellites into orbit? Spin Launch's Suborbital Accelerator Imagine holding a rope with an object tied to its end, then swinging it as fast as you can, sprinting and sprinting. Then suddenly you release the rope along with the object. What do you think will happen to the rope? That's right, it'll be tossed somewhere in the direction you released it. The faster you spin, the faster the launch of that object will be, the farther it will travel. Well, the heavier the object is, the more force you need to swing the rope. Now, this is the same principle that Spin Launch uses in their launch system, just a little more complex. Launching a satellite hundreds of kilograms in weight will be a monumental task. As I've said earlier, we need a faster spin to launch objects faster and farther, especially to reach space. This is where the suborbital accelerator kicks in. So, what is a suborbital accelerator really? It is a prototype machine that Spin Launch is using for catapulting objects into space. It'll be their stepping stone before creating their ultimate goal, an orbital accelerator that will enable us to reach into space using this giant catapult. Towering at almost 50.4 meters, or 165 feet, the suborbital accelerator will be Spin Launch's first step into finding an alternative way of sending objects to space. Let's take a deeper look into this giant slingshot. Making a ginormous rocket-flinging launch system is complex to do. It needs the most high-end and sturdiest materials to withstand its enormous force. One of its main components is the tether. The tether is like the rope that holds the payload at its end and supports it until takeoff. The tether should be the sturdiest part of the accelerator, as it will need to bear the weight of the object at a maximum speed. This will cause an immense amount of strain. The suborbital accelerator's tether is made up of carbon fiber reinforced plastic, which is among the strongest materials on Earth and has an unmatched strength to weight ratio. It can handle millions of kilograms of force. Spin Launch's accelerator aims to achieve a speed of 200 kilometers per hour, which will require the tether to spin 450 times per minute to achieve that speed. With a radius of 45 miles or 150 feet, the load on the tether will be 10,000 g-forces, which means it needs to handle a force 10,000 times greater than its weight due to gravity. Spinning at this tremendous amount of speed requires it to operate inside a massive vacuum chamber, as it will burn down to a crisp if it is exposed to air due to aerodynamic heating. With all of this taken into consideration, Spin Launch started with its first prototype to break the barriers and solve the issues they needed to proceed with this monumental project. Even with a prototype machine, their latest test flight at Spaceport America in Mexico left space fans in awe, leaving them wonderstruck for the future of this once-in-a-lifetime breakthrough. In April 2022, Spin Launch commenced their eighth test flight with the suborbital accelerator. They attached a camera to the payload to see how far this machine can launch the payload even if it is not at its full capacity. The data they gathered showed promise. 
the payload reached a maximum altitude of almost 9,150 meters, 30,000 feet above the Earth's surface, and was fired by the accelerator at a whopping speed of 1,600 kilometers per hour, 1,000 miles per hour. This is not even the full capacity of this prototype alone. Imagine the heights this innovation can reach when they finish building the final version of this accelerator. Can we send larger objects using this giant catapult? Or even a spacecraft into orbit? And most importantly, how does this innovation compare to traditional rockets? Solving the tyranny of the rocket equation. In 2021, there will be a total of 146 spaceflight missions solely requiring on rocket systems to go beyond orbit. NASA, on average, spends $152 million per launch, with a large chunk of the money going to the rocket's expensive fuel. This leads us to the tyranny of the rocket equation, which states that the heavier the payload is, the higher the amount of fuel we need to go to space. Simply put, rocket fuel is very expensive, and it's becoming a problem in the spaceflight industry. Did you know that the latest Mega Moon rocket of NASA, the Space Launch System, or SLS, uses almost 2 million liters of chilled liquid oxygen and hydrogen as fuel. These 2 million liters of fuel make up almost 80 to 90% of the whole spaceship's mass. Imagine, every time we need to send payloads into space, we use millions of liters of fuel, and these propellants are non-renewable energy. It is also getting more expensive every year. Not just that, these amounts of fuel can actually cause an indirect negative impact on our Earth's atmosphere as the production of hydrogen itself can cause an insanely high amount of carbon emissions. Space flights really come at an enormous high price. So you might ask, how to solve this tyranny of the rocket equation? Well, the answer is pretty straightforward. Use less fuel. And Spin Launch may already have a solution in the works. Are space catapults really cost-effective? Spin Launch's suborbital accelerator might actually be the future of space exploration. But the problem is that we have not perfected it. Well, not yet at least. If Spin Launch manages to successfully launch a payload outside Earth's atmosphere, it'll be a monumental day in the space industry as we unlock a substitute for expensive rockets. This is more important than you may realize, as the accelerator can save up to 70% of the fuel that rockets use when delivering payloads to orbit. Low fuel usage, lower costs per launch. Spin Launch's CEO, Jonathan Yane, claimed that their rocket-flinging launch system may just cost $500,000 per mission. That is almost 8,000 times cheaper than each of NASA's SLS missions, and it is four times cheaper than the already cost-effective Starship of SpaceX. Elon Musk might want to keep a close eye at this thing. 